Yes, I can see that it says we are now streaming live on Facebook. Nityanandam Paramashukaram Kevalam Yana Murtim Dwandvatitam Yagana Sadrisham Tatvamasya Dilaksham Yekam Nityam Fimalamachalam Sarvadi Sakshibutam Bhavatitam Trikunaritam Satkurum Tam Namami Thank you so much for tuning in. Very welcome in this live broadcast of uh, Ma Shiva Mayananda and Ma Atma Dayananda. We have been from Shivaratri to Shivaratri one whole year. Dan Nirahara. And Nirahara means uh, following a liquid diet uh, with the initiations and guidance of our beloved Guru. His Divine Holiness, Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. He has been initiating us, and maybe Ma Atmadaya, uh, you can tell something about that uh, initiation and what Nirahara exactly is. Yes, first of all, I'm very excited to uh, be live on Facebook, uh, but in this way, which is, of course, uh, we were just figuring out how to get onto Facebook live and together. So this is great. Thank you, Mashima, uh, for making this happen. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, uh, my name is Manitya Atmadayananda and um, Nirahara Samyama. So in 2012, actually as long as that, Swamiji, his divine holiness, Bhagavan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam, who is uh, uh, Ma Nitya Shivamayananda's guru and my guru also, you'll see in the background, we both have his beautiful, uh, what we call murtis, uh, deity of him. So we want to say it's a, in, a, in common terms, he'd be, you'd say it's a photograph of him. Um, but because he's sacred to us, uh, we identify every item of his as sacred. Anyway, so for those of you who don't know, that's him. And he's our guru. And back in 2012 is when he started initiating all the disciples who were wanting to experience this. Uh, Samyama, uh, which is being without food. So the first steps are actually to be on a liquid diet. Um, and I remember in the early days, actually now there is different types of varieties of liquids, but in the early days, Swamiji had said, uh, half a glass of coconut water is what you would drink in the, the day. So when he first announced the first initiation, I, I pretty much said, I don't think so. That's not going to be me. I'm not going to do that. Uh, what if, what if something happens to me? What if? you know, I die without food or something. So um, I, I didn't, I didn't take part in the first batch, but because I, I saw everybody being fine after the first batch, the second batch I joined. Um, so I actually lived on, um, see the idea is, uh, what Swamiji says is, we already have a certain amount of um, muscle memory and bio memory in us, which we bring from, say for instance, Plants. Plants don't need to eat <clears throat> per se. They live on prana. So yes, there's nutrients from the ground, but they don't eat solid food, obviously. We all know that. Um, so that part of us, we also have that ability, but along the, along the way, um, as, our, as we have evolved, we forgot that that is possible. So the initiation here that Swamiji gives is very much to have that experience and to see that you can live without food. In the early days, it was very much um, a Swamiji's initiation during Satang. So he would initiate us. We would do a particular meditation, uh, which was to meditate with the Banyan tree, which is in Bidhi. Now, there's a lot of things that I'm probably hearing here, which you may not be able to connect with. That's fine. If you have further questions, you can let us know. In any case, uh, that initiation then meant that for two days, we would be on liquid. Then we'd have one day break where we, where we would eat solid food. Then seven days again, liquid and then solid food. And then we had 11 days of liquid and then you were done for that month. So that would be the first batch. Level one is two days. Level two is seven days. And uh, level two is seven days. And level three 
would be 11 days. So all in all, it would work out to be 21 days. Did I count that right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so 20, 21 days is what we would. Um, I mean, some it's not fasting because you're not denying anything, but starting to experience the yogic abilities internally, which sit latent. Um, and Swamiji awakened those powers in any disciple that wanted to a devotee or a follower who wanted to experience this yogic ability in them. So that's just a little background. I mean, there is so much more. We have the foodfree.org uh, website that Manitish Shivamananda has shared. Um, there are many, many people uh, that you know continue even today. So we've had over 100 batches of Irahara Samyam, I believe, celebrated the 100th one just a few months ago. So they're, they're very much strongly going on. There's so many health benefits, which, will be, which we will go into um, as we progress now. So I'll let my Shivamaya uh, let me know if I've answered the question she wanted me to, or I've answered uh, the intro she wanted me to answer. Okay, she's giving me thumbs up. Well, she's giving me a, what, what would we call it? It's not thumbs up, would be that, but an okay. So that's good. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Yeah, thank you so much uh, introducing the topic of Nirahara. Um, I first got this initiation uh, quite a long time ago in 2014 and uh, started experimenting with it, uh, like you said, with the level one, two, three. And um, uh, in 2015, I got the initiation for D Samyama, which is the level four of completely going beyond food and at that time itself it looked like completely impossible uh, uh, you grow up uh, learning you have to eat properly at least three meals a day and uh, like uh, parents teach us right you have to finish your whole plate before otherwise you can't leave the table those kind of things so you get so um, conditioned with that we need three meals a day for our body to be able to have the energy to go throughout the day and to do stuff. And then suddenly you get to know, no, it is actually possible to go beyond that. It is, it is possible to go without any external food. Your, your body is actually perfectly capable to produce everything it needs from inside. Well, um, that, that sounded so impossible to me, uh, but at the same time, very, very much interesting. Uh, so I started to explore what is this then? And is it uh, true that it is just only patterns, that it is just only conditioning, that we, we need that? Uh, and, and what then? How does that work if you don't take in all that food? So I started experimenting with it and uh, uh, actually I wanted for quite some time to really follow this liquid diet for a long time as I was initiated in it. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it didn't came to that point till last Shivaratri uh, Swamiji announced for all of his disciples to go without food for a year. And then me and Madhmadaya uh, immediately took it up to actually do that. And uh, Swamiji gave the instructions to actually uh, do six days of liquids and one day of solid food. So that one day you can uh, uh, take a little bit of what you're used to, but uh, the other days only liquids so only thin uh, soups or juices uh, only like that and well that has been a, an amazing power manifestation actually i felt so much of new abilities opening up in me uh, the body had to really like reshuffle or adjust uh, to it in the beginning the first uh, two three months I noticed a lot of changes in the body, um, but after that, it, it settled actually beautifully down. And one of the main benefits I found is the spiritual involvement that happened. Like the, the way how easy it becomes to observe 
uh, my own thoughts going on, my own emotions coming up and going, uh, uh, seeing where are the blind spots, what patterns um, drive my uh, reactions in this in, in daily life. To be able to see that so much actually was hidden under a lot of food. Actually, food. I, I learned to know is like a major distraction. It is a kind of an entertainment. And so much of food I was not taking because my body needed it, but actually more like there was some agitation, some frustration, some unsettlement uh, uh, going on, uh, which continuously asked for food. Uh, uh, had, so that that all got hidden under taking taking that entertainment and and yeah uh, uh, co continuously satisfying these desires for certain food for a little bit of taste or even like how coffee uh, can change uh, your body and the way you feel and the way you uh, like suddenly you are awake when you drink a cup of coffee right before you felt sleepy and suddenly you are awake. It's like um, it, it influences you, your body, but actually uh, so much of food you're not taking because your body actually needs the energy. How, how is that for your uh, experience, Madaya? Yes, well, you've given some really amazing points. I can see a couple of them. One of them is this popular belief that I need to eat in order to have energy. And uh, I tell you, I was um, diagnosed with an autoimmune condition called sarcoidosis, which is a, a long time ago. Um, but one of the things is that it um, really reduces the amount of energy, makes the person breathless uh, and really without energy, you know, like literally draw out the energy. So it's, it's like having a cold all the time. The chest is infected, all this. Um, affected, not infected, affected. So it was kind of, I was battling with this energy thing. And it was, um, and then I was, uh, it because the condition got a little worse in 2018, I was uh, put on some medication. And uh, I started to, of course, uh, because of the type of medicine, I started to put on a lot of weight and the body started to swell up. So in fact, uh, I was, and medicine makes you eat more. Okay, so it makes the hunger is high. So I'm just giving this food it equals energy thing. Okay, so I'm going to expand on that and what my experience has been. So one is this autoimmune condition. The other is the medicine that makes, what used to make me really hungry. Uh, so I, have to, I had to eat and then the weight gain was happening. So all in all, all the types of, and exactly what Swamiji mentioned in satsang yesterday, actually, as Bara Shivaratri satsang, that a medication without a diet, you know, like some sort of a, a, a adjustment to the diet or change to the diet is not a solution. And really that was happening to me. Really it was happening to, until I did the Satya Sankalpa in January last year that I want to be healthy, number one. And two, I really want to get back to a healthy weight, which I had been when I was younger. Um, and of course I then, February, Swamiji, last year, February, as the disciples will probably remember, Swamiji decided he will do the Nirahara with us. Um, it was February last year, right? And that's when I was like, wait, if Swamiji is doing Nirahara, how can I be eating? So that's what awakened in me. If he's, if he's not eating, how can I eat? So then I decided I'll do level two because by the time I think the satsang happened, I already missed level one. So I said, I'm going to join level two and I'm going to do level two and three. And it went so easy. It was like the easiest Nirahara I'd ever done. It was like, uh, I didn't miss food. And then at the end of that uh, Nirahara, I got this, you know, Swamiji talks about the 25 states of consciousness and body, mind, you know, the different combinations of awake state, sleep state, deep, deep sleep state, et cetera. So I actually experienced at the end of that Nirahara, like this coating in my brain, as if there was a coating on my brain, like a foggy thing that just lifted after that Nirahara. Okay, so then I, that's my phone. 
then I understood that um, actually uh, doing more of this nirahara would be great. And I really, and I, I ate after that uh, February nirahara, I ate and I felt so horrible. I was like, I don't want to eat again. That's what I really felt. I don't want to eat. So when Swamiji said in Shivaratri time about doing dry fasting and then doing nirahara for the next 20 days, continuously without a break, I was just, again, it was so easy to do. Between that time is when he said, all my disciples, you know, you should uh, see if you can do six days liquid one day food. And that's when myself and Manira, uh, Masi, uh, Nirahara, Mashrimaya <laughs> decided we are going to do this thing. And we did it. And I found I have more energy because I don't eat. Right before, and I tell you how I uh, started to see the distinction, Ma, because you know, the six is you liquid and one day food that made me realize on Monday I was having less energy, Sunday I was having less energy because um, I was eating. Right? And this whole emotional thing that you mentioned as well, right? Emotions and patterns. This other point you were saying about emotions and patterns, that's when I realized that if I were to get disturbed, during the week, of course, there'll be many times that I would have had something or the other happen, but my solution was never to go to food. So that broke that pattern. You know, so over time, over the over years, I have had one, I have so much more clarity. I'm so much more organized. As you said, again, the point you made was that food is a distraction. It's like an entertainment. It's so true. You know, like before, what I would do is uh I <laughs> First, I'd wake, obviously you wake up, you do your regular things, and then, okay, what's for breakfast? After breakfast, what's, what, you already started thinking about what's for lunch, okay? By the time lunch is happening, you're thinking about what am I going to have for dinner? You know, and there are times when you go shopping and you have to think about the whole week's shopping because you're thinking, what am I going to have for lunch? What am I going to have for breakfast? What am I going to dinner? What am I going to be my, what are going to be my snack things? And things like that. And I'm sure there were times when I've had probably six meals a day if not more because the snacking in between as well and now i'm back to my more you know linear weight more lesser weight i have more energy i have to say that my iron levels the doctor thought because in november 2018 my iron levels were really low they're to the point of probably needing a blood transfusion except they didn't catch my result in time so when I went to them, when I went to the doctors in June 2019, they looked at me and they said, how have you walked here? Because you, you are supposed to need a blood transfusion. No, you don't have enough iron in your body. And I looked at him and I said, well, I feel perfectly fine. <laughs> I feel very healthy. In fact, I'm like, I could run right now. And when he said, how did you walk? I was like, with my legs. <laughs> uh, so I was confused. I'm like, mm, I don't know didn't understand so then he goes your iron levels are really low so we'll put you on some tablets etc and when i went back to my doctor just a few months ago i asked i inquired i was like what well, i didn't understand what was he talking about then then i read then i got to know so the doctor was referring to the november results november 2018 results right that my my iron was low but my June results show that my iron adjusted itself. Beautiful. So the Nirahara helped me to adjust my iron levels. You understand? So it but is not Ma, just... This is so amazing because uh, uh, like normally we used to, uh, to thinking like, oh, I missed something, so I have to add it. But actually yes. Swamiji is showing with this whole Nirahara that just... Yes relaxing giving your body the opportunity to heal itself will yes. perfectly make the body do that job yeah exactly what he said in satsang yesterday that if you just give your body time to uh, digest whatever you've dumped in because i used to really dump food into my body that is a bad like a really bad habit that i had whether i was bored or i was tired i even tired you know uh, or I was annoyed or upset or angry or depressed or sad or whatever, even an inkling of it, I just think my go-to was food. So 
So I was dumping a lot of food in. And I, Swamiji said in yesterday's satsang, your body will self-mechanize itself, as in self-adjust itself when you give it enough time. So I'm not, actually, I didn't even know about this, <laughs> the information that Swamiji gave in satsang yesterday. I didn't know this beforehand, you know, before I did this whole year, but my results and my doctors don't know this, right? See, so I go, I have to collect, in the, you know, the medicine that makes me hungry. Imagine I've been on that medicine, the dosage has lowered, but I've not felt hungry. Even being on the medicine has made sure that I'm not hungry. That is the power of the initiation Swamiji is given. So the popular belief that you need to eat in order to get energy is busted as a myth in my life. Anyway, to me, it's like, this, that's not true. Um, and that, uh, that what Swamiji said is something yesterday that your body will actually, you know, manage to take care of itself. My results are showing this that November 2018, my iron levels were to point of blood transfusion that the doctor didn't even catch it. Six months later, he tells me your iron levels are low. But by that time, I had been on Niyahara for already four months, right? So February, March, April, May, June, actually even, yeah, four months, I would have thought. Four, four and a half months, I had already been on Niyahara. And that, that time itself, my body had adjusted. So when I talked to this particular doctor, I asked some questions because my doctors change every time. So I asked him, I said, so how does that happen? He goes, the body does uh, manage, you know, it does, uh, set, you know, it goes up and down. So the hemoglobin and iron levels do tend to adjust themselves. He himself was saying what Swamiji said in satsang yesterday. So the information that Swamiji gave in satsang yesterday, I already experienced it through being in Irahara. So uh, you know, I, I would say that these are the points I'd like to highlight from what you said, which are true. And in my case, medically also true, uh, because I've, and, I've and, been... And even test. proven, because what you tell, yes. like uh, between November and June, how you got the results, and actually only by doing Nirahara already, it sorted itself out. I mean, uh, uh, I had didn't have any medical condition for which... I needed to go to the doctor. So I also don't have any proof, <laughs> but you beautifully have uh, proof uh, because of this process that actually it happened. It, the body restored itself just by doing this process. That is amazing. Yes, and the medication has reduced. So I don't, awesome. you know, the doctors are very worried. They're like, oh my God. And I, I used to keep saying to them, I need to reduce it. You need to reduce it. You need to keep reducing. So over the year, uh, not only has my health improved because of the Nirahara, it is exactly any, if anybody wants to rewatch it, it's something when it's uploaded, I'd highly recommend listening very carefully because I'm an example uh, of uh, what has happened in the past year, um, you know, in terms of medical condition etc and what how how i i actually have so much energy and i don't need to sleep as much um i'm able to coordinate multiple zones actually the zone has increased despite of the silly uh, attacks and abuses uh the the, the zone has expanded even more uh, more centers more work uh, even you know and uh absolutely there, there we are so i would say that yesterday satsang i am a live example of everything from she shared in yesterday satsang. Uh, it definitely has happened and started to happen even more for me um and before the satsang was delivered <laughs> Emma, you shared with the viewers just uh, uh, a little bit ago that uh, you gained some weight uh, due to the medicine you were taking. Uh, did you also lose that weight again? Because you look amazing. Oh, God. You know, if I could screen share some, somehow, I'm not prepared the picture, but let me see if I can find it on my uh, phone quickly for you. If I can find it on my phone while you're sharing. Uh, then I will just put it to the camera and you can see the, you can see the weight difference. Yes. 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 Oh, amazing. Then in the meantime, I would love to share something because um, uh, with this Nirahara process, of course, uh, losing weight uh, or being on your ideal weight is also very much a topic. Um, it should never be the goal solely, of course, to do Nirahara because it goes uh, it is very much 
uh, about manifesting the powerful cognitions, the deeper truths, uh, and exploring like the full potential of our body. It is not a diet to just gain weight, but um, gaining weight, that can be very much uh, a side effect of it. And uh, Swamiji has been sharing in the past also that like if you need to lo lose weight or you want to lose weight, uh, that can be part of the Nirahara. In my case, it was the opposite because I, I, ca I can't afford to lose any weight because there is no, nothing. I always have been uh, having the body that, that is the opposite. I always tried to uh, just uh, uh, gain some weight. Um, to be powerful and, and, and uh, having a strong energy. So uh, I said, actually, because that is also something that uh, our beloved guru uh, shares with the world, in power manifesting, you, you can, uh, with your consciousness, affect directly matter. And the body also is matter. So with your conscious decision, you can alter uh, certain things in the body that you want to alter. So uh, I did the opposite of altering it. I told my body very consciously and clearly, connecting to the body, telling, okay, I'm going to do Nirahara, but you have to remain the same uh, uh, weight. You can't lose any weight. Uh, because uh, I can't afford that. Then I'm getting skinny. People start asking, uh, are you sick? Are you well? You know, so I didn't want to have to let that happen. So I made a, such a sankalpa, as we call it, a very conscious resolution for my body to stay in the same condition uh, when it comes to weight, not going under this uh, amount of cages that I was uh, weighing. So uh, when I started, I was uh, uh, 57 and a half cages. Now I'm uh, 56 and a half kgs. So one kg all, all over the whole year, I, I lost. So that is very much of a strong power manifestation because the amount of food that I take in has lessened so much. I mean, I used to have three meals a day with uh, like uh, uh, either rice or bread or uh, potatoes or all these uh, kind of things. And now, uh, like all through the week for six days, I've only been taking in some vegetables, some um, uh, fruits uh, in form of juices and soups, uh, a bit of um, uh, vegan milk, like only those kind of uh, things and, uh, and herbal teas and a bit of coffee. So only that taken in, it is like very, it is, I'm, I'm still really, really much amazed by it that I didn't uh, lose that much of weight. So that is a power manifestation on its own. Now, I would really love um, Ma Admedaya to come back online because she dropped. But I think this uh, Zoom is locked. So let me see in the meantime if I can change that. Hmm. Okay, so I hope Ma Admedaya can uh, join back in. We are all doing this live, it doesn't matter, just to stay with us for a moment because we have more amazing things to share. Okay, let's see if, uh, if she can come back uh, online in a moment. What more amazing things to share about this whole Nirahara process is that uh, in terms of body weight, we manifested a huge power in terms of uh, detoxing patterns, detoxing the body physically, mentally, uh, psychologically, uh, emotionally, uh, in all these fields. 
actually so much of cleaning has been happening. That is literally also what uh, Swamiji has been sharing in, uh, uh, in satsangs, that all we need to do is detox all the uh, delusion out and detox all of the things that we have been taken in that actually don't belong to the body, are not needed in the body, not required or even uh, poisoning the body in the wrong way. It all can be cleansed out. And when we do that on a physical level, it also happens on other levels. And I can really vouch from that now from my own experience because so much has been cleansed out, so much has been transformed. Um, and uh, yeah, in kind of, Mahatma Daya also shared like the amount of clarity that we have, the amount of focus, the amount of how good organized we are. It really expanded uh, a lot just by doing this process, actually. And then I'm not even talking about uh, the yoga practice, for example, because on a daily basis, I teach yoga and uh, certain asanas that I was not able to do before. Now, really easily it comes. And that is also one thing that I noticed, like how much a full stomach is actually uh, making you heavy. How much uh, having still food in your di digestion system, um, how much that literally uh, restricts your body uh, and your, your life to, to flow. Uh, certain asanas uh, suddenly I could do when I started doing Nirahari. And I really noticed the difference uh, when on Sunday I would eat. On Monday, the whole yoga practice was way more heavy, more difficult uh, than on all the other days. And uh, it, even in the beginning, the first few months, it took actually uh, mostly up till Wednesday for everything to be cleansed out that I ate in the weekend. So that is almost three days that that process is going on and that uh, food is still sitting in you. And by now, it, that has been, that time has been so much reduced, like uh, same day, most of the time, same day, it's coming out. So that uh, tells me also like uh, the, ah, there is uh, Mahatma Daya again, great, great, great. Yes, I'm so, so sorry, you know, my laptop decided to shut itself down. And I was like, ah, no, no. <laughs> I'm really sorry. And I was like, I hope that the live wasn't disturbed for you. So you were able to share, uh, have some time to share. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you had to say. Uh, but it just, it just crashed on me. I got a picture ready. Uh, so whenever you are ready, let me know and I can share it uh, with everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to finish the sentence, I was um, sure. uh, just explaining that about digestion, uh, how that even goes so much faster uh, from intake to coming out. That whole process has been reduced. Like uh, in the in the beginning, when uh, the Nirahara started, that could take up uh, uh, eating on Sunday. It could take up to Wednesday, till everybody everything was completely like flown through. And um, now that is so much faster, um, mainly it's the same day or, or the next morning. So that also tells me that uh, digesting uh, the food goes so much easier, uh, quicker. And uh, how Swamiji is sharing, like the, the way you are able to digest food is uh, equivalent for how you've been able to digest life, all kinds of life situations. Uh, so many things can happen in a day, and especially how you and me are trained uh, in, um, in Swamiji Sangha. Uh, Swamiji just ensures we will every day be uh, out of our comfort zone. We don't get to rest and lay back in, in that comfort zone uh, uh, and sitting there staying uh, kind of the same or having vacation. Uh, we are we're pulled out of that continuously by new projects, uh, uh, require, requirements for expansion in the things that we are doing. And um, 
uh, whether how, however we successful we are in delivering our results, at least every day we get out of our comfort zone, right? And meaning out of our comfort zone is also that we have to be able to digest what all is happening there because we can't like uh, use that what what I used to use uh, as a pattern like staying keeping myself in a comfort zone is is like controlling the situation making it safe making sure that you are not getting disturbed by maintaining that comfort zone and when you continuously get out of there you have to be able to digest all the disturbances the fears the uh, angers the the whatever is coming up and what is presented in you because like life is so much of um, insecurity actually continuously so to be now, able to digest or at that, least facing them right so what what you're saying is i can what I'm getting more clarity on is that Nita Ara Samyama is not just a body detox, it's an emotional detox, it's a mental pattern detox. So it's not just you will have a regular juicing that would probably, yeah, you know, when it's not initiate, it is not an initiation from an inclination from uh, someone like Swamiji, then yes, the body does detox, so the body will adjust to whatever it needs to adjust to. In terms of emotional um, and a much more sort of deeper rooted patterns, like you said, you know, fear, insecurity is something the entire humanity is running with, right? So we're actually operating um, by either hiding it, pretending it's not there, uh, avoiding it, uh, but not facing it. And what you are saying I'm getting is that it, the, the Nirahara gives you the ability to face and digest what you need to digest so that you can face what you need to face head on. And that's why absolutely. you get more done. That's why you get more done because you are not be allowing fear to hold you back or to you know, make you shrink or stay in that comfort zone, as you're saying. Right? It's like a multi-layered, uh, complete uh, detox, not just one you know, a bit of this or that, you know, once in a while, I feel. Then, and Swamiji actually says, this year, what I'd like to add, Mahashivamaya, is I'm actually going to continue. Um, we just, from Paramashivaratri to Paramashivaratri, so we did one year of Nirahara Samyama, which is six days liquid, one day food. Uh, I am going to continue five days liquid and two days food in terms of Saturday and Sunday uh, for practical reasons more than anything else. And then celebrations with the Sangha, because I think the whole of the Sangha finds it quite tricky. I mean, I said, no, I won't be, I won't be joining you for any food on uh, any other day. And then they all pack all the food for me on Sunday. And it's like, ah. <laughs> 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 so I said, just for them, I'm going to spread it over two days. But actually, even spreading over two days, uh, it's too much food. Um, I can see already that it's, it, this is just special occasions. Like, you know, if for instance, if Shivaratri was, uh, or Diwali was on a Thursday, then that was the day I would say, okay, I would celebrate with everybody else and have some solid food. But the idea is not to be in liquids majority of the time, still continue for the next year. And uh, as a Sankapa, like we did the Sankapa last year, for 108 temples to happen in UK, Europe and Africa. And I can see so much has happened towards that in the past year. So I Absolutely. continue to... Do Tiaga of my food. Uh, and now, my Shiva Maya, you know, Swamiji's also talked about every 14 days, uh, 15, you know, 14, 15 days, we we'll do Shivaratri. So again, Tiaga of food and um, uh, Tiaga of food and uh, sleep. So yes. at least uh, continuously, we can do, we will do that for a year. And then uh, the other one that Swamiji had mentioned, Parma Shivaratri to Parma Shivaratri, is the seer can change the scene. No, so that that was another uh, sankalp I wanted to take. Before I sh before I go on to the next bit, I wanted to show you this picture, okay? Where you asked me about. Oh yes, let's about, get back to that. There yes. you go. That's yeah. me. This is me March last year, and this is me now. So there you go. Can you see the difference? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So a year I've, of... seen, I've seen you on a day, quite a daily basis. So yes. uh, of course, then it's the the change is not. But now you take the pictures uh, together. Yeah. Really, 
change the so uk i mean there's a huge huge amount of oops let me see yes there's a huge amount I, if i go on this side a little bit higher ah yes and then this is me now so you can see it's a it's a big yeah see yeah it definitely is a big change you yes. can see you your body uh, got so much healthier and uh, yeah. more sparkling in terms of energy definitely yes so i definitely these uh, i would say for anybody who's thinking about you know whether to join nahara or not i say totally uh please do i know i know ma shivam is really efficient with these things she will put the link in, i think she already put the link in terms of the tagging that she when she tagged me and she announced that we will be doing this video um so she's tagged there she'll put all the links for anyone who's new who'd like to experience this and there are many people i wanted to share this with you actually uh, and the rest of the viewers who are watching that um you know where i pick up my medicine uh, on a regular basis i have to go and pick up my medicine so the pharmacist there um he saw me quite a few months later because i don't have to see him that regularly i have to see him every few months so i went to see him and um to pick up my medicine and he said he looked at me and he said uh, you've lost weight you've lost a lot of weight and i said yeah because i'm on this liquid you know liquid lifestyle um and he goes um is that self induced <laughs> well, i said uh, well, yeah i did decide to do it myself and i said i had less energy when i was eating and i feel more energy i have more um then i explained to them and i said do you find yourself that after you eat a big meal you feel sleepy you know or if you have lunch or dinner or breakfast you can't then that the next thing is like this dullness that happens it's really bizarre like a dullness cuts your brain i can't think I've had that feeling of I can't think. What am I doing? I can't think. It's not only <laughs> you have to do this to actually experience the difference because a person who's already feeling dull is not going to know what it feels like to be sharp. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know I could be this sharp until I did the nidahara. Before that, I thought whatever I was doing was what I was capable of doing. today i feel this, I've, i'm i'm like oh my God, i can do so much more so when i explained it to him actually there there's a couple of people there who started doing reducing themselves just because i shared the benefits uh and they see if they've, they've seen me physically you know do it um so now popularly uh even my mom and dad have got used to this whole thing uh, with nirahara and they ask all my friends first are you eating today or you're not? <laughs> because you know in the sangha we may likely be doing nirahara samyama you know <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> they're already accustomed to the to this lifestyle wow yes ma and uh, one uh, one thing you said i also uh, wanted to to highlight that is uh, actually that empowerment because nirahara i feel so much empowered by it nothing is taken away in the opposite so much of power energy is added to my system or unlocked uh, however you want to call it and uh, that also held really much because when we started we said okay let's do this nirahara in order to manifest uh, 108 sri kailasas in uh our europe and africa zone so uh to for to manifest all these uh places to happen and doing doing nirahara for that a lot of people actually ask me like what is even the link like how will uh, uh going on a liquid diet help you in uh manifesting something that you want to manifest in the outside world how how does that happen and um in the beginning i could not explain i could only say <laughs> like my guru is telling so it will work you know but now from my experience i can share uh, that because so much of energy is added to you so much of um uh new 
possibilities and potential opens up in the system, like literally miracles happen. Like the expansion just, ha just yes. happens inside uh, the being. And for that very reason, so much abilities become available to me that I didn't know I would have. Yes. That I didn't know how to use, but you are also mentioning so much more clarity and sharpness. And for that very reason, things manifest uh, tenfold of what they did before. Yes. See, so one of the more energy thing, flows. Uh, Mashima, I you know if people ask logically, it makes no sense. How is you being on a liquid diet going to make this? But of course, you see, the clarity is there, right? So we're very clear this is what we want to do. Um, then there is, of course, this um, activism. I've seen more activism has happened, you know, making something happen, more of that, that possibility is there because the more I'm like, yeah, I can live without food, the more that confidence has happened, of course, even this, and then then oh, because food uh, and you're doing Tiago of patterns all the time because boredom and tiredness are not running our life, right? So, Obviously, then um, your, um, how do you call it? The conscious part of you, the stream conscious part of you expressing more, right? Because the dead patterns are leaving. So of course, what is their room for supreme consciousness? And what are temples, Wi-Fi of supreme consciousness? So it all kind of lines up in that way is how I'm seeing, you know? So it all aligns to that way of living, which is what ends, Mamaji mentioned in something yesterday, make Paramashiva a priority, right? If you're making supreme consciousness your priority and you are relying on that space, you're working towards that space, expressing more of you from that space. And of course, only the best of the best will happen and then everything uh, around that. And I've seen more temple activism happen in Europe and Africa. We've got more regular, you know, our, our Sangha is regularly learning new rituals and by the way we completed 11 pujas uh, for Mahashivaratri as well as we offered twice 108 uh, names of Mahashiva and we also offered Abhishekum so we were you know pretty full-on uh, uh, celebrations have started to happen already and and to top it off all which is like totally unexpected Paramashiva himself Swamiji himself declaring uh, Europe as t having temples, you know, even though we have the small Vogamotis. And uh, when he said, uh, you know, we can also participate in the Kumbha Shekam, London Temple, Italy Temple. I was like, I was, my jaw was at the floor. I was like, wow, that's what I've been waiting for. So 108 temples may have not physically manifested physically. That's not the point. The point is the big breakthrough that we wanted has happened. For us, uh, which is where we were stuck, you know, and I know, I am absolutely certain with Paramashiva's grace, with Swamiji's grace, we will have physical places also very, very soon. Um, but yeah, so I, I wanted to say my uh, Manitish woman in there that I would like to let you know I would need to leave soon. So perhaps we can do this another time as well. So maybe we can come back a couple of times and I don't, I am not able to see if there are people asking live questions, um, if they are. Then uh, that's when, they, when, whenever this video goes on, people can ask questions and we can come back uh, for more. Absolutely. Um, I'm also more, not uh, able to, to see it here, uh, at least not in uh -huh. the screen. So uh, people might have been commenting. Otherwise, they can right. also still do. And we will take those questions and comments into the next video. Yes. It's been, I have to say, Ma, see, it's for me and Mashima, when Mashima said she will do it, and then people who I had said I will do it, you know, last year, they were checking with me, you know, are you still doing it? I was like, well, yeah, it, why wouldn't I? Of course. It's, but it's been one of the easiest, easiest uh, one year of tapas, I would have loved. It's not even a tapas. <laughs> has made it so easy. Uh, and only good has happened for my body, for my relationships, um, you know, for my work, uh, for everything. As, um, you know, Swami just showered and showered and showered on me. That's how I feel. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Me too. You're talking about Tiaga, uh, which uh, sometimes gets translated as renunciation. And so Miji has been explaining lately in satsang, like actually it's power. It's pure power uh, when you are able to sacrifice your small time pleasures for the bigger goal of life, the bigger uh, picture that uh, that how you want to live and what you want to uh, manifest and that is that is literally how I feel it helped me so extremely much to focus on yeah what I'm here for uh, what I actually want to do with my life and like get rid of all the actually not so important things anymore they might be feeling uh, uh, like uh, like how a cake can be really tasty but after after eating it like five minutes later you forgot about it right oh my god you know what Mashima? this i have to tell you before we go this thing okay and i'm sure you'll agree with me okay and anybody that does nirara will agree with me as well and, you know, there might be a day when, you know, the next day you're going to eat, right? And you're like, what do I want to eat? There's still this like, okay, what is that I want to eat? And the food that you think you want, like the food that I think I want to eat, actually tastes better in my head than it does physically. <laughs> so physically when I'm eating, I'm like, mm, it's like, yeah, it's, it's like, it's very ordinary. But in my head, it's been highlighted with these flavors and all sorts of things that is just not true so I, this is another pattern i noticed that the fantasy the fantasy of food is more colorful yeah it's got more flavor it's got more whatever 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 in it you know all of this blah blah to it but the reality of it is that it's it's just a bit of like somebody says it's either food like food you know, kind of plastic, but food like food, but it's not good for you. When he says plastic, it doesn't mean plastic as in the actual plastic. But actually, if you look at your ingredients carefully in some of them, some of them, some of those ingredients actually translate to plastic. That means they're not real, yeah. real food. That's what some means. That, and, you know, it's not a, you know, we, we're getting so many things added to even our vegetables and fruit. It's quite scary, actually. Uh, but this is one of the things, you know, like, uh, there were there were times when I was like, okay, on Saturday I'll take turkey Sunday for breakfast. I'd like to have this, for instance, and then I would take two bites of that thing, and I'll go, hmm, it's a bit, mm. you know, uh, so it can t taste a lot better in my head than it does in reality. So that's one of the things I wanted to uh, to to just make a point while we're sharing um, uh, in this thing that. One, you don't need food to not necessarily need food to survive, to live, to get energy, not like that. Um, and we're also not saying that you should starve yourself, not like that either. But there is a intelligence in the body, which is, you tends to have a much more intelligent mechanism, that it's much more intelligent mechanism. And we ought to give that a chance to operate in our life. And that's what I feel Nirahara Samima does. It allows you the space and time to let that kick in, you know, that intelligence kick in rather than uh, mindless eating, uh, dumping of food. You know, it's, it's a cognitive shift, cognitive uh, shift in how we are handling food in our life. That's what I would say Nirahara Samima is really, really doing for me. Absolutely, absolutely. It is breaking patterns uh, on all levels. It is directly breaking all the food patterns, but it is even breaking emotional patterns, thought currents that are actually not necessary, but um, or even very restrictive in your life. But they're you're you're able to catch them, uh, become aware of them way more easily than when taking in a lot of food. The health improves, the self-healing capacity of the body improves, the consciousness, awareness uh, improves so much. It is literally an empowerment to manifest what you want in life. Um, and also, indeed, uh, in addition to what you told, it has made me um, uh, value raw products so much more. Just like really 
um, uh, to to eat just some biological, organic, uh, healthy, uh, vibrant of energy vegetables, or just some simple rice, some nuts, like those kind of uh, basic uh, things. Uh, actually, if uh, I have been not eating for a while, those are the products that my body actually wants, likes, appreciates. Way more than uh, all of the things that uh, taste very good. Nothing wrong with, with cake or sweets or, or whatever. But that is actually, that is just um, fringe, so to say. Uh, and you can take it on a celebration day, nothing wrong. Uh, but uh, uh, that, that yearning no longer be there, that is just beautiful. Yes, and anybody that has questions, uh, if you have fears or you have concerns about what happened or et cetera, et cetera, um, you please feel free to come and speak to myself, Manitya Shivamayananda, or my, myself, Manitya Ardayananda. Or you can even connect with Shunitya Pranavananda, who really does an amazing job with the whole Be Food Free. Um, you know, he runs and organizes uh, the every, every month, Nirahara Samyama. Um, so, and I would, I, I would highly recommend watching uh, this Paramashivaratri satsang because it was very powerful and it very much is highlighting uh, what myself and my Shiva mother had have had glimpses of in the past year from having done tyaga of food actually. So uh, we are living live examples of the truth Swamiji spoke in. Uh, yesterday's not yesterday the day before yesterday's satsang where are we yeah yeah Friday. yeah yeah, yeah. We, can, we can add Shivratri. it to the to the description uh, with an easy link uh, for everybody who's for everyone. so then you can easily find it and mm -hmm. last but not least i want to put a little bit of a disclaimer um because we have been sharing so much of nirahara and going on a liquid diet um, I really want to say, if you are interested in this, if you want to explore it for yourself, please go to uh, www.befoodfree.org and don't do it on your own without initiation, because the guidance of Guru is major in this, is crucial. Uh, uh, we, especially if we're not used to the Vedic tradition, we might not maybe understand completely what the effect is of the initiation of a guru. But um, to go short, I would absolutely advi advise you not to go without, but do it with the proper initiation. Because uh, in there, with the initiation, really the ability that we have uh, naturally in our body, but it is hidden under a lot of layers that gets opened up with the initiation. It's like installing the software on your phone and then using that application to do certain stuff on your phone. You would not do the same thing without the application, right? That's not possible. So in that way, you also need to understand that the, the, the diksha, the initiation of Guru is crucial for this to make it a real power manifestation. And that is also what makes the difference between this Nirahara is a yogi power and a starvation or uh, eating disorders where you don't where, where you deprive the body of food while still running with the same thought currents that the body is actually needed that food because as long as we think like that and we operate like that we should also add that food all right Oh. Well, actually, I've done both. Um, when I was younger in my teenage life, I was anemic. Um, and, sorry, not uh, anemic, anorexic. At some point of my life, it wasn't a, like a disorder disorder per se, but I actually, uh, it's kind of similar thing, but for six months, I, I would hardly eat, but it was an insecurity that if I ate, I would put on weight. Okay, such mm -hmm. a, I've had such a body dysmorphia, like I've had such a body image problem for most of my life, pretty much most of my life. And uh, Nirahara Samyam has also helped that because I'm just remembering when you're saying about starving your body, I've done that as a, you know, probably would say my early twenties. Um, and really it wasn't good because I lost all the nutrients in my body. I was actually dizzy. 
And I had a fear that if I ate even a peanut, I would put on weight. So that was a completely different way of doing it. As you're saying, you know, it's not, it's not about encouraging any of your body image disorders or any other food uh, eating disorders that we may have. This is not that this is a healing mechanism. And if it wasn't for Swamiji's initiation, I am such a foodie, my Shivamaya, like, uh, you know, and there are people in the Sangha that will, will testify to this. They will attest to uh, the fact that um, I, I would not, I wouldn't give up food for nothing before. If it wasn't for Swamiji's initiation and just a simple word, you know, my disciples simply start doing six days, one day. I really, without his word and initiation, no way I would be able to do it. And it is such a sankalpa as well, which is his initiation, which just triggered the whole thing off, right? So the only part I would say for me was the willingness to want to explore this journey. The rest was his initiation, making it easy and making the whole journey easy. That was it. So yeah, that's such an important point you've just mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we have uh, actually quite a few topics that we could make other videos about because this whole, there are so many, uh, uh, especially women, but people in general uh, that are having body issues, uh, eating disorders, and even therefore it can be hel very helpful to do Nirahara, but uh, with the right cognitions, manifesting the right cognitions, that is a whole topic for a separate video. <laughs> so we'll collect these. And uh, if you, uh, to all the viewers, uh, have a certain topic that you want to, uh, us to speak more about, please put that in the comments. Then we'll take that up also. And um, we will make a few more videos uh, about this topic because it is too important. There's so much to share about this. And well, having a year of experience uh, now, uh, we can really uh, share um, not only from what we know about it, but also that we literally are the living proof of that. So Maat Medaya, thank you so much for oh, thank doing you, this uh, video great. together. <laughs> yes, no, you did a great job of bringing us live. I, it's actually my desire. This is one of my desires to do this. Uh, but I just didn't know the technical parts of how to do it. You know, I've seen our lovely Guru Bhai uh, Dridananda, Shinitya Dridananda do it. Uh, and I've seen uh, Maswatantra Priya do it with yourself. So I'm really, really happy I was able to come on and join you. Thank you for organizing this. And as you said, I look forward to having more videos. If there are questions, we can share the videos with everyone. And then if there's questions we have, we can certainly support. I'll tell you one more before we go. As we're leaving off, this is a real power manifesting, but the space is open so much that I'm able to cause so many more realities in my life. Such a power is such a power, really a beautiful power. So thank you, Mashivamaya, for having me. Thank you so much for experiencing this whole year of doing Nirahara together and now making a video to share it with others also. And hopefully, as inspire you to um, experience and explore for yourself so i will put some useful links in the description box and um, we'll be there to answer your questions in the comments and in next videos so thank you very much for watching and um, see you next time let's end with the purna mantra Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamada Yamuname Papasishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Sakavam Bhagavat Srini Chananda Paramashivam Parukar Panamastu Om Nityanandam Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers. Nityanandam. Nityanandam. Take care.